Hi friends, welcome to Harmony Hills Home and Garden. I'm Jenny, we're gardening here in Baltimore, Maryland, Zone 7. Today I'm gonna to be talking a little bit about garden maintenance in the summertime, specifically grooming some um, foliage plants to make the foliage look just a little bit nicer. They're looking a little tattered after about half the summer heat has gone by. So it's time to do a little bit of cleanup, a little bit of maintenance. So come along with me and let's see about keeping our foliage plants looking healthy and nice. Here on our north side garden, we have a lot of foliage plants, things like hostas and brunera and uh, pulmonaria and astilbes and other things that are mainly here for their foliage purposes. So, and some of them are looking a little bit tattered. Here's a great example of what I mean. This is brunera. I think this is Jack Frost bruna. I'm not exactly sure, but you can see some of the leaves look really great, but others of them, they have some uh, damage from insects this is also insect damage but this is also from having dried out um, and yeah so here's a here's a leaf that's drying out so we have a lot of damage from um, not being kept moist enough but also we have some um, insect damage on here and the same can be said for that one and then over here here's a hosta um, it's looking mostly okay but here's some slug damage from the hosta and some more insect damage each of these leaves has actually got some insect damage on it and this could be earwig it could be slug it could be another kind of uh, leaf eating insect but um, so some of these hostas look fine but others of them have a little bit of damage that needs to be cleaned up. This is my Aurelia, the Sun King, and uh, it's got some insect damage on it as well. So some of the leaves look great, others of them not so beautiful. And as we look down the whole side garden, there's just little bits of dried up foliage or insect damaged foliage that we can take a look at and see about cleaning up and making just a little bit nicer looking. So. We're gonna do a little bit of that kind of maintenance. Now, a little bit of insect damage on your leaves, it's not something to really worry about. Insects live here too. We're not the only ones who share this earth. So I don't go too crazy over seeing things like slug damage or earwig damage or other sorts of things. But once it starts to really decimate a plant, then I think it's time to take a little bit of action. Otherwise, what's the point of having the plant here? So there are a variety of different ways that you can manage this. And I'm gonna talk about a few of them. For this um, brunera, I can see that there are several leaves that have been damaged because they dried out too much. And then there's other leaves that have insect damage on them. But I can also see that there are several new leaves and new growth coming up from underneath. So I'm actually going to trim off the damaged leaves all the way down to the base whether they're damaged from drying out or from insects, cut them off down to the base and then water it in really well and maybe give it a little bit of a boost of fertilizer and then let this grow back from the base of the plant. So it looks like I'm really doing a number on it, but it won't take long until this plant regrows uh, some nice fresh foliage. All of these plants I'm growing for the purpose of their beautiful foliage. So if their foliage is not beautiful, it kind of defeats the purpose. So I like to look at the hostas. First of all, I'm gonna take this off, the spent flower stalk. Um, so I like to look at the hostas and determine, um, like this leaf right here has a big hole in it, lots of holes in it. So I'm just gonna take that off. And as long as you leave, you know, a significant portion of the leaves on the hosta, it can withstand losing some of the leaves over the course of the summer. So I'm going to take off some of the more damaged ones and take them down into the base of the plant. Now the other part of this is 
I don't want to take off too many of these leaves because then the plant will suffer and it won't be able to keep itself healthy over the rest of this season. So I'm going to take off the worst damaged ones, but leave the rest of them. Um, sometimes I get lucky and there's only a few damaged ones, but if there's a lot, then I just make the choice of which of them are the worst off and which of them need to go and then leave the rest. From far away, you can't really tell the little minor damage, I, so I'm really getting at the big damage that you can see from across the garden. And I think that's pretty good for now. Now back here on this uh, Sun King, there are a lot of damaged leaves on this, but from far away, you can't really see them all, just a couple of them. So like this one right here, take that one off, maybe a couple of these others. I mean, there's more holes on here, but you can't really see them from far away. So I'm gonna leave this plant like, oh, maybe I will take this. So that's pretty good. On this Sum and Substance Hossa, there's one leaf right here that is really damaged. So I'm gonna take it out. This one has pretty, pretty good damage on the end of it too. Uh, now, here we are in the mid to late July timeframe. And I have to balance how bad does the leaf look compared to how much time does it have to regrow another leaf before the end of the season. And if it were August 1st, I wouldn't really be taking off any major leaves. Um, but since we're still in mid-July, mid to late July, I think I will take a chance here. I'm going to go ahead and take this leaf off because it is because it's on the outside and it kind of defines the edge of the plant. And because of that, this chewed out edge here and this chewed off point here really actually catches my eye when I'm looking at it. So I'm going to take this leaf off. But if this were August, I wouldn't have done that. Okay, now there's a hole here, there's a hole here, there's holes on almost all of these plants, uh, but I can't afford to take off all of these leaves. So I'm gonna have to leave them, but I will be treating the soil around here with some bait for slugs and earwigs, and that will hopefully prevent further damage this season. All right, and then this one is coming off there. Um, this one has actually got holes and some leaf miner issues going on. And the edges of these, man, they just don't look very good, do they? But if I put the good looking leaf on top of them, it hides the damage and I don't have to worry about it too much. So I just don't want to take off too many leaves. All right, so here I'll take this one off and this one. I'm gonna leave the rest of those. In an effort to try to prevent further damage, I'm using this bait for slugs and earwigs. This is the Sluggo brand, Sluggo Plus, and that means uh, that it is, it is for slugs plus other things like earwigs, cutworms, sow bugs, pill bugs, slugs and snails. So this is an iron phosphate main ingredient, and iron phosphate is naturally occurring in the soil. So you can consider this appropriate for organic gardening methods. So the plus part of this is the spinosad, a mixture of spinosin A and spinosin D. And so that's the part that kills the earwigs and stuff. So this comes as a pelletized bait product. It looks like little white pellets. And so you just spread this around the base of the plants that you're protecting. Comes in a convenient shaker. And so you just shake it out. product. There are other brands as well. I think most of the major companies put out a version of this. What you're looking for is iron phosphate. That is the product that is going to be um, 
attracting the slugs, snails, earwigs, and other things, and um, killing them, but in a mm, almost organic way. I say almost organic. I'm not really a very expert on organic gardening, so I don't know. All I know is that it says on here, for organic gardening, and, I, and so I got, went with it. Okay, now I have to apply this product about every two weeks or I'll start seeing damage on my leaves. I have been using this pretty regularly over the course of the summer. I started using it the first time I saw any slug damage on any of my hostas, and I had been for a while only using it on my special hostas, but now I'm using it pretty much on anything that I'm seeing leaf damage on because if I have foliage plants, I want the foliage to look nice, so. Okay, this day lily, it's got lots of browning and yellowing leaves in it, so I wanna get those out. They're just an eyesore. It's actually why day lilies are not my favorite plants, mainly because the leaves are, um, I can't keep them looking nice in my garden. I don't know why. I mean, it's entirely possible that the reason I don't keep them looking nice is because it's a maintenance chore and I don't like maintenance chores. So, you know, I really like plants in my garden that are kind of lower maintenance than this. suppose it looks better better than it did but I'm a little drippy now so ugh. all right let's take a look at these hostas here there's some really holy leaves on this one I let the earwigs get way too bad on this one accidentally that's what happens when you skip your garden maintenance for a little while it doesn't take long until the bugs come back all right, let's say that's good enough for that one. And then this one, boy, this one has really taken a beating. I mean, on this hosta here, nearly every leaf looks damaged. Here's one that's not, it's brand new. Here's one that's like half, like not even worth having on there. Try to clean this up a little bit, make it look just a smidge nicer for the rest of the season. If you did this in early July or even late June, I've been able in the past to actually cut the hosta all the way down to the ground and just let it reflush. That's worked for me before, but it's just too late in the season for me to want to try that right now. So. I'm just going to take off the worst offenders and then see if I can water it well and put some slug bait on it and see if I can limp it through the rest of the season. Same thing over here, this poor hosta, it has a lot of holes in it. Take off the worst leaves. I do see lots of fresh growth coming up on this one, so I am gonna be a little bit more severe with this one than I was with the others. These leaves are just been decimated. I really should have had the slug bait out more than I have. OK, 
Okay, this stand of Astilbe's has a different kind of problem than bug damage. It's not a bug damage issue here. This is a not wet enough soil issue. So I don't know if you can see, but these leaves are crispy. And um, a lot of them are. I have been doing my best to water these, but clearly my best hasn't been enough. It needs more water than I've been giving it. So I'm gonna try to pull off the driest leaves and hope that it will regrow. I am continuing to water this very thoroughly all the time. Uh, but I think a stilby in this spot is just, it's just too dry. So for the long-term health of this plant, I really need to find a better spot for it where I can keep it wetter all season long. Also is suffering not from disease or from bugs but from uh, scorching. I think there was a hot sunny morning where for the one hour that this plant gets direct sun I think it was burning on the hot bricks and that's why I have this leaf tooth damage here. So, I mean there is some bug damage here too that's definitely snail or earwig damage but it's also sunburn from a hot morning so I'm just gonna really take this one down to the bare bones and I'll bait and I'll hope it comes back. This one, this is a June hosta and it doesn't have too much bug damage on it at all. Here's one, but that's more from having been folded. Okay, well, stops off of it now. So this one looks pretty good from the bug perspective. It's got some bird dew on it, but yeah, it's pretty good. Sun King right here has really, really bad damage. This is either from slugs or actually more likely earwigs. The way I understand it, earwigs eat from the sides in and slugs eat holes in the center. So this could be slug or it could be an earwig, but this is probably earwig damage. But this is the level of damage to a plant that might begin to threaten the life of the plant. I mean, look here. Here's one leaf totally gone. Most of this frond is gone. And luckily the plant has put out some new growth from the center, but that new growth is being eaten as well. So I have heavily baited around it and I'm hoping that that prevents further drastic damage like it's seeing. Um, and actually I'm not gonna take off very much of those leaves because it has so little leaf, um, or actually it has so much leaf damage that I want it to preserve every bit of leaf surface that it has so that it can grow. So uh, I'm not gonna take off too much of these leaves, just the very worst ones. Oh my. So yeah, that's, that is bad news. This one over here also has pretty significant damage to it. And I'm gonna do the same Thing with that. I'm going to bait very heavily around it and only take off the very worst offending leaves, but leave the rest of the leaves so that it can have something with which to uh, soak in the sun. I had hoped that this hosta, which is in a container, would be saved from slug or snail or earwig damage, but nope, it's got damage on it too. So I guess bugs can crawl. So I'm going to um, bait in the pot and around the pot for this one. Here's some pretty significant leaf damage on this contorted hazelnut. I mean, that's the veins of the leaves and the leaves are supposed to look like this. 
But all of these leaves have been chopped off except this last one. Wow, and I see more of it over there and over here. All the new growth on this tree um, has been attacked. So definitely going to bait around here. I wish I'd seen that earlier. So that's my little half hour afternoon of garden maintenance here in the north side garden. Getting rid of slug and snail and earwig damage and um, damage from having dried up and not having enough water. So again, um, don't go crazy on this because bugs are allowed to live in our gardens. They're part of the ecosystem. But on the other hand, foliage plants are about having pretty looking foliage. So I am... Um, not tearing all the leaves off the plants, just the worst looking ones. And then um, just, you know, when I see leaf damage on a leaf, I'll say, yay, my garden has a full ecosystem. Maybe that'll work. I don't know. Anyway, uh, what do you do to keep snug slugs and snails and earwigs from decimating your plants? Do you have any ideas for me? Does iron phosphate pellets work for you? Or do you have a different trick? I've heard about, for slugs, I've heard about beer traps, copper rings, um, sand, eggshells, uh, and uh, I've tried all of those and they don't work as well as the copper I mean, as the iron phosphate. So that's why I'm using these pellets. So, uh, but share with me what does work for you. What have you tried and what works? I'd love to hear from you. Maybe we can all try something new together. And uh, yeah, so how's your garden coming along? Is it time to be pulling off those browning leaves, those, those leaves that got crispy in the spell where you maybe didn't water as often as, you, as the plants wanted? Let me know in the comments below how your garden's coming along and what kind of tricks and tips you have for us to keep your garden looking groomed and beautiful and lush throughout a hot summer. I hope to see you again very soon in another video, friends. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.